Hello, everybody. Um, as you know, I'm not very, um, I'm not very good at this, but I am very excited today to um, to introduce a really, really good friend of mine who um, who we have we have shared many, 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 many a story, and we are incredibly uh, uh, we have lots of stories about that. But I wanted to particularly talk with Ryan, my really good friend Ryan, who has a wonderful free mental health um, program that he's introducing. So I just, as you know, I'm, I'm not a great technology person, but um, this, is my, uh, this is my attempt at kind of introducing something and somebody who I, I, I think is doing some really good stuff. So, right, I'm gonna just wait for this person to come on. Right, right. Wow, this is a whole new madness. Okay. Here we go. Um, I'm just gonna have to fill some time now, team. Um, hello everybody. Hi, Sal. Um, so I, I know that, you know, partly why I wanted to do this was because I felt like um, there isn't, you know, there isn't a lot of um, free stuff for mental health. And I know, you know, from my own um, experience of being broke and not having any money and needing kind of, you know, some kind of help with this stuff, I felt like it would be a good thing to, uh, uh, you, you know, I wish I'd had some access to this stuff. Okay, here we go. Here he is. Right, right. God, this is very strange now. Ryan Wise. <laughs> here he is. You right, did right. it. This is, my, this is my first Instagram live ever. I'm very, I'm very honored to be, well, to be if, your first. If, if it was going to be anybody, I feel like uh, it would be the the man who, who, I stay, I literally left indentations in the couch of your uh, house, and you gave me a home when, uh, when I didn't have one. So I, I feel like it. I feel like it's the least I could do to repay you for. Uh, for helping me out. Well, it was it was a pleasure and I love you and I'm so glad that we get to spend a little bit of time together with all your with all your friends on here. Yeah. Yeah. All all, all uh all of all of them. All these lovely people. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, I was just saying right that you know actually just talking about that time for me, you know, not having not having a lot of money, not having, you know, really access to kind of therapy and things like that is is how important and and why i really love the fact that you're you're doing this with, and, and, it, and it's free so i just want to give you a little bit of time to to kind of introduce that and and talk about what it is and and why 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 you kind of felt like this was needed and and how you came to it yeah well um, firstly, you know, I think one of the things that I've been privileged as your friend is to see for you in particular how important your own search for self-care and mental health has been. Mm -hmm. um, and and, and um, I kind of want people to know before we start this conversation about self-care and mental health, how we care for ourselves, how we heal ourselves, trauma, that this is not a conversation that Daniel and I are having just because we like want to have the conversation. It's a conversation mm. that Daniel and I are having and have all the time because we need to have the conversation because both of us here have struggled with mental health, have struggled with relationships, have struggled with our own um, dependencies, addictions, emotional avoidance. Um, mm. And so I really want people, because I know with, with you know, your, the people who are on here right now know you in the, in the image that mm. they get shown through the yeah. photography and the characters and yeah. um, but I get to know the person that, right. that 
you all may not get to know so much that the person, the guy that's on top of me right now um, <laughs> all right, um, right. is someone who's deeply passionate about psychology and mental health and, and healing. Yeah. Um, and I really want people to, to understand that we're coming into this conversation because it's deeply personal for us. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So, uh, so I created a project, a free mental health program challenge called the Sanctuary Challenge. Um, firstly, you can see the handle up there. You can come follow so that you can learn more if people are just jumping on for a quick second. Um, or you can go to our website, which is thesanctuarychallenge.com. Mm -hmm. Thesanctuarychallenge.com. The Sanctuary Challenge is a free 60-day commitment to five daily self-care practices. I'll tell you about what the practices are in a moment. But what I really want to say to everyone is none of us were ever taught how to take care of ourselves. Mm. If we look at our parents, if we look at the society, if we look at the economy in which we live, um, we were largely taught that taking care of ourselves is selfish. Um, we weren't taught the value and the importance and the impact that taking care of ourselves can have. Mm. And we were mainly taught that taking care of ourselves is like, let me work hard, get the right education, get the right job to make money so I can be happy at some point in the future. Right. And that's what we taught with self-care. Yeah. But meanwhile, we have this entire emotional life that lives inside of us mm. that has been avoided. And we've experienced trauma. We've experienced not being nurtured. We've experienced as young, young children crying out and not getting our needs met. Yeah. And we become adults who don't know how to be in healthy relationships with each other, who are so incredibly stressed out and anxious. And at the beginning of this pandemic, which, you know, the one cool thing about this pandemic is that it's affected every single human on the face of the planet, right? Sure. So everyone on here has been somehow affected by living through this pandemic. Mm. What I saw at the beginning of the pandemic, now mind you, I've been doing... Um, I've been a mental health professional for now 11 years, right? And so I've seen a lot. I've got to support a lot of people as a coach. And what I saw at, when the pandemic hit was a major rise in anxiety. Mm. Major, major rise in anxiety. Yeah. And in everyone, in myself included. And so I started doing a lot of talking with people on Instagram, like putting out as much free material as I could about what anxiety is. Sure. And what we tend to think is I'm anxious because I don't have a job. I'm anxious because there's a pandemic. I'm anxious because my family member is sick. I'm anxious because I don't have enough money. I don't know how I'm going to pay my rent. Yeah. And what I'm trying to help people to understand is that What's actually true is that all of those things, all of those challenges, all of those hardships that are happening, the triggers that are happening to us mm. are actually stimulating anxiety, absolutely, but that they're, they're triggering pain that lives within us and that's been with us for our whole lives. Yeah. And that anxiety is actually what happens when we don't know how to care for ourselves and feel the stuff that's getting stimulated. Yeah. So, so there's all these triggers, right? Somebody says something to us, we get a bill we can't afford, we lose our jobs, and there's a rush of emotions that happens in our body when the trigger happens, right? Mm. But because we're so emotionally avoidant, meaning we avoid our emotions, we don't know how to feel our feelings, we jump up into our heads, right? So there's a trigger, we feel a rush of emotions and we jump up into our heads and then we start thinking, yeah. why is this happening to me? Why did he do that to me? Why doesn't she love me? Um, I wish this was different. What does this mean about the future? And we think and we d dive into this whole world of thought about the yeah. situation. What are we going to do about it? And we live up here, right, in our heads. But meanwhile, there's a rush of emotions that are happening inside of our body. Yeah. And so when we jump into our heads, we put a clamp on those emotions. We're pushing down, we're pushing them down. We're saying, I don't wanna feel that. I'd rather think about this. And so when we're pushing down and the emotions are rising up, it creates a tension, a stress in our body 
that the body can't handle and the way the body responds is with anxiety. Mm -hmm. that's, what, that's what anxiety is. Mm -hmm. Emotions are rising up, we're pushing them down and that tension is anxiety. And so I started offering a lot of programming during the pandemic to try to start to help people build a relationship with their emotional life. But the problem was, was that we can't build a relationship with our emotions if all the time we're just running, going, mm -hmm. doing, thinking, moving, making, going, 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 going yeah. so fast. We actually have to learn to dial it down and slow down mm. and start caring for ourselves so we create some safe space to start letting the healing happen. Because here's the thing, Daniel. Mm. You're breathing right now, right? Mm -hmm. That's amazing. The universe that we live in has given us everything we need. Breath, food, a sun in the sky that warms our body, water we can drink. All of our basic needs have been given to us in this unbelievably incredible universe mm. that meets all of our needs. And that that intelligence that supports us and feeds us and nourishes us and sustains us is literally right here. It's right here. It's mm -hmm. in us. It's, mm -hmm. it's literally, it's closer to us than our breath. Mm. But if we're always running away from it, we don't then get to experience the love and the healing that is right here for us. So we have to learn how to slow down to meet the healing and the love and the support that's right here for us. So that's why I created the Sanctuary Challenge, mm. is five daily practices that are all focused on ways that we can slow down and nourish ourselves. And so the five practices are a daily guided morning meditation, which all you have to do is push play. You don't have to know how to meditate. You don't have to be good at meditating. There's no such thing as that anyways, that's bullshit. Mm -hmm. You push play on the meditation, you sit, you close your eyes, and you let it guide you, okay? The second thing is trying to get in 30 minutes of exercise or moving your body, whether that's going for a walk, a run, um, doing some kind of a fitness regime, some yoga, mm -hmm. because we know that that stimulates um, endorphins, which are bliss chemicals, happiness chemicals. It also carries toxins out of the body. And it also gives us a sense of accomplishment, which right now, living through a pandemic, it's important that we all feel like we're <laughs> accomplishing something. Sure. The third is healthy eating. And what I mean by that is just eating more food that comes from the earth, less processed food, more food that comes from the earth. The earth is intelligent. You can't, you can't avoid it. The earth mm. is brilliant. Yeah. And, it, and, it, and it builds that intelligence into our food and we can eat that food and put that intelligence into our body for healing. The fourth commitment is a ritual that I call goddess time. So whether you are identify as male, female, whatever, goddess time is a time where at the end of our work day, our mom day, dad day, student day, looking for work day, whatever we're doing all day, we're accumulating stress all day. That's normal right? Mm -hmm. Stress is normal. It's a part of being a human being. There's nothing wrong with stress. There's only something wrong with stress if we let it accumulate, if we don't wash it off, right? right. So at the end of the day, before going into the evening, somewhere around 5 p.m. or 6 p.m., we get into a bath, or if we don't have a bathtub, we lay down, we put our feet up a wall, we play some beautiful music, we put our technology away, and we just let ourselves sit for 20 minutes and do nothing and let the body kind of relax and the mind mm -hmm. kind of relax. And then the fifth commitment is getting eight hours of sleep. So this may be a lot for people, right? If you're like, I don't even do one thing a day like mm -hmm. this, the invitation is come sign up for the challenge. We'll give you all the tools, the audios. We have a habit tracker that you can print out or you can make your own to check off your success along the way. Mm -hmm. We have tools to invite your community. So if you have friends, family members, coworkers, students in your whatever, yeah. um, 
to invite them to do it with you so that you can help hold each other accountable. So we have people now from all over the world who are taking on this challenge, yeah. who um, have groups of five or six people and they jump into a WhatsApp thread. And every morning they say in their WhatsApp thread, um, good morning crew, today I am committed to my morning meditation, my exercise, my... and they put out all their right. commitments. Right. And then they get to support each other, to hold each other accountable through all of the commitments. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I believe that that's what community could be for, right? We don't have to hold ourselves accountable by ourselves. We could right. do it through community. Um, if five daily commitments is like just, whoa, this is way too much for me. Sure. I just say, just start with one. Right. And next week, see if you can add a second. And the next week, see if you can add a third. The other reason that we're doing this for 60 days, right? This isn't like a, here, come join our three-day challenge. Yeah. Come join our seven-day challenge. Is that 60 days, it's going to take time to establish new habits and new behaviors that are actually good for you. Yeah. So what I want to say to everyone listening is, if you want to be in healthy relationships, if you want to have a healthy relationship with your body, if you want to be successful in your work and your creativity, self-care is not a luxury. It's an absolute necessity. Yeah. And so um, if this interests anyone, which I really hope it does, um, we've got all the tools to support you. Um, and that's what I'll say for now. Thank Any you. Any thoughts or questions? It. Yeah, you know, I, I think, you know, just to kind of piggyback some of, of some of your things, I think, uh, firstly, like, what a what a brilliant thing to introduce, you know, because it, I, I think, although the the um, pandemic is in some way a, a global sense of reflection, right, a stopping or a, a, a kind of a hold in, in, in the hamster wheel or the wheel that we kind of think of as our validation right is is actually this 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 kind of a practice is the kind of thing that that needs to be whether there was a is a pandemic or not you know that this if if anything comes out of this the idea that we need or require more things more uh uh to f to get this thing to to be able to feel this thing you know, and I'm, I'm I, as you say, uh, and I've talked to you a lot about this, but um, this, I, this idea of the external validation or the idea of some kind of uh, uh, thing triggering it, your anxiety, which is actually deeply your own sense of trauma or your own sense of thing, is something that, like, I'm very fascinated by but in, in psychology. But we really don't have, you know, we have lots of, gym memberships and all, and all of these things we have ways to achieve a certain sense of um outer kind of validation but we don't really have many practices that are about slowing and and, and appreciating or understanding oneself and i think like for me what i really loved about this is you really it is starts so small and they seem so small you know, even if you do do one of these things a day. But the the sense is, is that you begin to have a relationship with self. You know, you begin to have the relationship with, oh, I'm triggered or, or, or I, I feel this because of this other thing or this reminds me of this other thing. And you begin to build up a knowledge and, and instead of kind of going through life with the uh, objective of something, or uh, then I won't feel like this, is to begin to go, is to begin to, to really build up a sense of, this is who I am, this is what I am, and this is therefore a beautiful kind of practice, I think, to begin to build up real genuine self-worth, which uh, I, I know from, I know with social media and I know with, an incredible amount of stimuli in our lives, self-worth is, 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 is a very difficult thing to get hold of now. And so I, you know, I, I really love these things. And, and accountability is, 
is part of that as well. You know, I, I, I recognize also that building habits is hard, you know, that it, it is hard and it's, it's hard, especially when everything else around you will tell you that this, you don't have time for this. You know, you, you need to do this to make more money or you need to do this to, you know, look better or whatever it is. And it's kind of, it's kind of like, the, this is actually the root of all of it. And so if you can just look at this, I feel then you're beginning to kind of almost like see behind the matrix a little bit. You know, you're kind of seeing, oh, my life looks this way because of my deep-seated trauma or my deep-seated sense of self and this is how it got here and it doesn't mean it has to stay there which I'm, I'm sure you're seeing already people who are beginning to have a much more interesting relationship with the, themselves yeah. and their surroundings <clears throat> everything you just said is so valuable and i really hope that everyone really just heard everything that Daniel just said, because that piece, especially around self-worth, mm. right? This, this societal collective insanity that we've bought into that says, mm. I have to figure out how to prove my self-worth, right? Through getting more abs or mm -hmm. more money or a bigger mm -hmm. house or the right car or the right mm. outfit mm. Um, is a losing battle. And it's one that many play out for 80 years. It's one that many people play their entire lives. Yeah. And what we know is that even when they achieve whatever it is that they think is going to make them worthy, right. that on the other side of achieving it, there's still a, okay, so now what next? Yeah. What next? Yeah. It's like a horse, you know, how they, how they would get horses to walk in circles and they would dangle a carrot in front of their mm -hmm. mouth just yeah. far enough for the horse never to be able to get the carrot yeah it, that's how we've been trained mm -hmm. and what i really want to say to people is i want us all to understand that we were born worthy yeah or else we wouldn't have been born the miracle of life that you at home right now listening to these words that it took the, the what it took to birth you mm. with trillions of cells inside your body yeah the intelligence to help you to breathe and digest food and you were born worthy of life. What more worthy could you be, right? Mm. And what I wanna say to people is, you're not only worthy when you have a smile on your face and when everything's going great in your life and when you have the perfect body, yeah. all of you is worthy, all of you. Your sadness, your anger, your depression, your anxiety, your not enoughness, your judgment, your criticism, your blame, your shadow, mm. your fear, your doubt, your trauma, that's worthy of being here too. Yeah. And what we tend to do is we tend to hide those parts of ourselves sure. that we think won't be loved. We hide them away. Yeah. Or, or we try and prevent, or we try and stop them, right? We try, I, I, I feel bad or I feel this. And so I need to not feel like this. Yes. And that is often, that's often like the cause of a, a, a grasping that ends up only perpetuating the same kind of constant thing, which it, that's another part of it too, Ryan, I think is a really good point, which is that actually any, sitting in pain or sitting in whatever uncomfortable emotions is something that we we really don't have to do nowadays because everything that is designed around us is 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 basically essentially kind of competing for comfort right this uh, the the you have a microwave because it is hard for you to be able to cook real food or you have all these devices that are about time saving because or comfort levels and actually the the interesting thing is sitting in the discomfort let's just say cooking without a microwave you know as an example is about having the time and relationship with oneself and being uncomfortable it is it's a pain right it's annoying but it's it's sitting in those moments and being able to like have a relationship with those moments that is really 
a beautiful part of um, uh, of life. You know, I, I think we just uh, collectively as a society, we just we aren't doing that right now. I, I, I feel we aren't sitting with our, our emotions. We aren't sitting with discomfort or um, things like that. And so, I'm sorry to, to kind of interrupt you, but I just no, no. Really this is it. that's exactly right. Societally, we are emotionally avoidant. That's what you're talking right. about. Yeah, we avoid uncomfortable emotions mainly because when not mainly because when we were born, mm. when we when we expressed our uncomfortable emotions, anger, sadness fear mm. are the three basic uncomfortable or what we call negative emotions. Yeah. When we express them, our parents did to us what their parents did to them, which right. was, get the baby to shut up. Here's a pacifier. Right. Here's a bottle. Right. Here's a screen. Right. Here's some food. Right. Or we experienced trauma where the parents screamed at us or hit us. Right. Yeah. And we learned in very early years that if I feel those uncomfortable emotions and express them, it makes my primary caretakers go away. Right. right. They're not able to hold space. It makes them go away. But as a young baby, mm. I'm 100% reliant on those parents. Right. They, I can't feed myself. I can't right. run from a predator. Right. I can't change my own diaper. Right. right. I need them to stay close. So if I learn that my negative emotions make them go away, or mm. that what they're saying to me is I shouldn't feel this way when they go, shh, 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 yeah. right? Yeah. Then I learn, ooh, if I feel these neg negative, they're yeah. not negative. If I yeah. feel these uncomfortable emotions and I express them, yeah. it makes my parents go away, which makes my survival yeah. brought, brought into question, right? Absolutely. And then we become adults who still believe that if I feel these uncomfortable feelings, mm sadness, anger, fear, that it will threaten my life. It'll make people go away. Mm. And so I avoid them at all costs, right? That's what we call emotional avoidance. Yeah. But here's the thing is that's also the birthplace of addiction. Yeah. Because if I'm feeling the uncomfortable emotion and it rises up and I don't want to feel it, I don't know how to feel it, I'm going to look for things what we call medicators, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Food, porn, mm -hmm. sex, mm -hmm. cigarettes, alcohol, hard drugs, social media, mm -hmm. scrolling, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Television, anything to help me to avoid paying attention to what's coming up inside of me, right? Mm -hmm. The thing is, is like what you're saying, if, you, if we actually build practices to feel all of it, that's where our healing lies. Mm. But if we're always running away from what's here, we, um, it's, like, it's like picking a scab off of a wound over yeah. and over and over again that just festers and grows and gets worse and worse and worse. And I yeah, think, I, by the way, what you just said, too, is a title of a book, Competing for Comfort, should be a book that we should write. <laughs> that's a great title, Competing for Comfort. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, I, I think... I think it, it really, you look at things, I mean, I certainly, I look at things now, Ryan, and, and, and I'm, I still am subject to it, right? I, I, I'm still subject to these moments of, um, even in the awareness of, of my own, um, trying to be much more kind of aware of my own, um, my own emotions and what's what's really going on here you know trying to ask those questions i, I and i'm still it I, i'm still subject to moments of losing myself in that in that compete and comfort thing and and i i i feel you know i i have luckily a, a group of friends now who i i meet with like once a week and it's it's all about accountability it's a little bit like you, you know the um whatsapp groups it's 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 like to check in with people around their progress and 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 feeling like there that there is a sense of um there is a sense of having to work on this when there is so much competition, right? You know, that you, it is 
worth taking your time to um to to really cut through it and and do something about it and i feel like that that part is is where i i sometimes struggle because it's it's so easy day to day to get washed up in it and 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 therefore there's there's something around having someone that you can check in with or something that you can check in with um to hold yourself to that yeah um because you know i i i've been subjected to addictions i've been subject to to i've done a lot of courses i've done a lot of psychology work and it is it's still remarkable to me that my brain uh, you know uh, suffer with depression and and it's still it's remarkable to me that i can know it and still be subject you know and st- yeah. and, and still be like okay i'm going to sit in this emotion and and still feel like god this is overwhelming yeah. you know this is this is overwhelming yeah um and i think a sense of pride and like you say a sense of um uh, of achievement is really important in that yeah. you know in that battle yeah you know the the piece that i want to just like really underscore here is we can read all the books and we can have all the conversations yeah. about all of it yeah and that's great but only to the extent that it leads us to our practices right we have to be in our daily practices Right. We, we, no amount of talking about the daily practices will ever right. substitute for actually doing the daily practices. So like with the sanctuary challenge, as it's unrolling, I go on a live stream every morning, just to have a conversation about a topic and just yeah. to help people stay engaged and, and stay inspired. And, and every morning I finish the live by saying, I want you all to really hear me. Mm. coming on these live streams and listening to me talk about these subjects and healings and relationships and codependency and all it's not going to help you right right unless you follow it up by doing the practices right right this is you know as my teacher marion williamson says the era of data collection is over yeah, it's not about it. getting the next book or yeah. doing the next program it's about yeah. actually doing the practices yeah. that give our body our mind our soul what it is we need yeah. to heal which is why the sanctuary challenge is it's not a book it's right. five daily practices and we're right. giving you the tools to do the practices but the practices right. only work if you work them right it's like in 12 steps they say right. the work works work if you work, work it. it yeah exactly. i think you know right the other thing is like you know sometimes these things can seem like the latest thing to make you feel better and i and i and i want to just make sure that that, that I, i'm not saying you know, i don't think what you're saying is you're going to then you're going to achieve this and and do this it's like that the the achievement isn't in 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 getting out it it is really about what you, what i think you're d- doing is really about not picking up knowledge of oneself and that and that is it's not going to change you know you're not going to earn this amount of money in this you know or or you may just really get to know yourself and that is it is such a vital part of living so so that you aren't in later life like you say at 80 years old you aren't chasing this thing you 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 really are able to sit with yourself and that can be uncomfortable or it can be great or whatever it is but you're then living in the fabric of life you know you're you're living within life instead of you know i have a really big thing about my relationship to time right my my relationship to time is future based or past based that's that's my relationship with it and um you know i've i've been doing the challenge um and i i i've begun to meditate uh which is i know hard for a lot of people and hard, and hard for me but uh it, it is it's like i'm just beginning to try and go oh i only have this time i only have this moment and i only have this particular um thing and and so i i feel very uh i feel very like the, the, you know i don't want to to kind of 
it to be a, a, a way of kind of numbing, you know, or, or saying this is going to be the thing that will make you feel better. It's like really about a knowledge, I think. Yeah. Of oneself. Sure. It's about the knowledge and it's also, you know, I'll even take it and this isn't the answer that people want to hear, right? Mm. But it's, this is not about making yourself feel better, right? And right. I should also tell you that that, that that shouldn't be the goal in life. The goal right. in life should not be to feel better. Right. Healing happens as a result of feeling, not better, right. feeling whatever it is that's here. Yeah. Right? So healing happens by, by building a relationship with whatever we're authentically feeling, whether we like the feeling or we don't like the feeling. Right? right. So, and when you're talking about kind of leaving the present moment or this relationship that you have with time and diving into the future or diving into the past, like mm -hmm. this is, we're all doing this, right? All of our thoughts come from the past. So right. the morning meditation for the sanctuary challenge that people can, will download again, totally for free. This whole thing, if you're just joining the sanctuary challenge is a free mental health program. You can find it at the sanctuary challenge.com. Mm. Um, the morning meditation that you download um, the, the theme of it is literally, I am here. And I have mm. people just repeating to themselves, I am here, right? Mm. Like right now. And, and there's nothing to change right now. I'm willing to be exactly as I am right now. Because mm. when we go out into the world, the world is always telling us, you should change this, you should change that, you should change mm. this. And that is so baked into our psychology. Yeah. So to start our day every day with the reminder of, I get to be exactly who I am, what I am, as mm -hmm. I am. And I'm deserving of love and belonging and community and success as I am with my shadow, with my pain and my joy, right? That's the truth. Mm -hmm. That's what will always be ultimately true. It's mm -hmm. just that we never learned it. And so I'm hoping with the sanctuary challenge that we get to learn this in a way that we never had the opportunity to. Okay, right. So, so is there anything you know that, that everybody should obviously go and, and and follow the sanctuary challenge and and you know kind of be more informed about it and and, and I know a lot of you are uh, you know uh, uh, there's a lot of young people who uh, follow me and I know that it's 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 bloody hard being young and yeah. and you know it's bloody hard being kind of going through this this thing and and uh, it's, uh, you know in some way you are sick of celebrities telling you this is the this is it and you know uh, or people that think they're celebrities or whatever it is kind of being these authorities on it I, I don't want to be an authority on it at all I'm just saying and I think it's I, I defer to you Ryan in a way of just saying look just try it and 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 see and and kind of it's got to be better than the shit that we're being told you know it's got to be better than the things that that don't seem to work you know i yeah. i don't i just don't like it's got to be better than this because yeah. it's it's hard it's hard right now and i wouldn't want to be i wouldn't want to be 17 18 now you know i, I wouldn't want to be you know well, I gotta say, you know, one of the coolest things about the challenge is we have been um, noticing um, how many teenagers mm. um, have been. I'm, one of the people that we did a live with is a young woman named Lauren Yuregi. And she, I don't know if you're familiar with her music, but she was in Fifth Harmony with Camilla Cabello right. and her. And, and, so, and she has a really young following, which right. brought a lot of people um actually daniel will you do you see that comment that just came through from ladymar.21 that says the sanctuary challenge.com yeah if you hold your finger on it and click pin comment then it'll just keep that up there so people can see the url how do i pin it right this is like if you hold your it. finger on her comment hold it on there do you see it still uh yeah yeah and then something will pop up that says pin comment <laughs> no no, don't, don't, worry, do don't worry about it. I, I haven't even like I can't even read these things. They, they, oh, okay. Here, 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 here. I'll I'll put it in now. Here, the sanctuary. Oh, I can pin pin it. I pinned it. I pinned it. Oh yeah. Pin Great. That. You did it. You did I'm it. learning. Um. So uh. So what I was gonna say was, 
um, we have a ton of teenagers who are taking on the challenge. And, and in fact, there's actually a WhatsApp group that formulated from the Instagram lives that I do. Mm. Somebody on there said, is anyone on here a teenager? And there were like 30 people that were just like, I am, I am, I am. And this right. person just took it upon themselves to say, send me a DM and I'll add you to the WhatsApp group. And there's this right. WhatsApp group with a bunch of teenagers from all over the world who've never met each other, right? right. They've never met each other and they're supporting each other in their accountability of their practices every day. Wow. So for teenagers who have, or, or college students or people in their 20s who've never grown up in a world without their cell phones, right. um, we know what this is doing to mental health, right? right. And, I, and I love my phone. It's a great tool. It's just that typically it uses me instead of me using it. Right, right. Yeah. Um, and so I want to support people in kind of building a relationship with themselves mm. off, off their phone. Um, right. And so, yeah, this is, this is a great tool for young people. And I, and I, really, I really hope you use it because um, the pressures of, of school and family and mm. a pandemic and are too much. It's too much for one person's system to hold yeah. without finding community and support to um to work through it all and that's yeah that's what we're here for and that's the other that's the other reason that this thing is free is like for too long mental health tools have been um given or provided to yeah. essentially wealthy white women right? right wealthy people who can afford access yeah and i think about the high school students the college students um the people of color, like people in the LGBT communities, like people who don't have the access of an extra $150 for a therapy session, mm. who need to have, um, yes, I see your question. You can do the sanctuary challenge from anywhere in the world. We have people from all over the world doing the challenge, but mm -hmm. people who don't have access to the money to be able to afford to pay for therapy or a yoga membership or whatever. Mm. What I really want to say is self-care is free. It's great if you can buy all of those things, right? Yeah. Um, but ultimately self-care is free. Yeah. Um, as long as you have the tools, which we're giving to you for free, um, and some space and the commitment and the willingness, that's, that's all it takes. So, Daniel, I appreciate you so much. Thank you, Ryan. Really and I, I thank you for, for speaking so eloquently and be, and and uh, and thanks for doing this. You know, like I, I like I said, I, it's it's such a such a nice thing to have free things for people to you know use or, or, or not use and and try and and I think um, I just I, I'm just very aware of of mental health and um, how we have to live with ourselves all the time, you know, and that's, that's the, that's the thing that things change, they go on outside and but we end up having to live with ourselves. So it, it, I just think this is a great, a great tool to, to live with oneself. And yeah. so um, thank you for, for, for doing this. And I hope people got a lot out of it and, and um, you yeah, know. I mean, what I'd say is maybe what we can do is to everyone on here, um, firstly, a couple things. I'm seeing a lot of questions, people saying, please save the live. I think I told Daniel how to save the live. So ha hopefully you can go back and, and yeah, replay it. I can remind that. you about how when you end it, Daniel, you, it just says save to IGTV. Yeah, this and might, this may, this may be well out of my uh, thing. It, it's we'll it's actually very, it's it's the it's the most simple thing of anything you've had to don't do. Don't say that, right? Because if I don't do it, then I'll be <laughs> fucked. Well, then here's the second thing I'll say is, y'all take on the challenge. It's free. There's no reason not to. And yeah. maybe if Daniel's down for it in a couple of weeks, two weeks from now, maybe we'll do this again and check in and hear from you. How are you doing? Get your mm. questions answered so that we can just like stay you know again like i said the work only works if you work it right mm. so if all of you take this on invite your communities to do this with you um yeah. you'll see on our website actually once you sign up again for free you'll see a tab that says um invite my crew 
where you could just yeah. put in your friends' email addresses, send them text messages with the URL saying, I'm taking on this challenge. Why don't you yeah. sign up and do it with me? Start an accountability crew. Um, yeah. And then in a couple of weeks, we'll jump back on and we'll just have yeah, a conversation yeah. and see how it's going. Yeah, be, I mean, it'd be interesting to know, you know, just what if what you notice and 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 uh, it would be it would be cool just to kind of have a a sense of you know whether whether it, it does something for you or it doesn't yeah. you know whatever it is whether you're ready or not ready for it whatever it is but um thank you Ryan I appreciate it and and uh, I I love you very much and I will say again Ryan is the person that uh, uh, let me sleep on his couch when I first arrived in LA and had nothing. So uh, he knows that uh, uh, he he knows that the struggle that has been and and has been a big part of my life. So so I just want to thank him for that as well. And uh, thank you everyone for for listening to us. And um, and I hope you go and uh, yeah take yeah. a little moment out of your day today. All right, team. Right, how do I end this now, right? So do you see the X at the top of the screen? Big X. Click that, then click share to IGTV, and then you can just put on there, you know, conversation with at Waking Up With Ryan about at the Sanctuary Challenge. And okay. then you'll see it says like post to feed or whatever, and then just put, click post, and then it'll, okay. it'll upload to your IGTV. Perfect. All right. Thank you, everybody. Cheers, guys. Bye, everyone.